part of today. My name is Stig Weems. I'm an audio book narrator. Uh, I've narrated uh, hundreds of audio books by such great authors as Tim Winton, Morris Glidesman, Paul Jennings, Andy Griffiths, and, and heaps more. In fact, I'm sure most of you have probably listened to one of my audio books at some time throughout your life. In fact, in fact, who here has never listened to one of my audio books? Ever heard? Re really? You've n n never listened to The Day My Bum Went Psycho? Zombie bums from Uranus doesn't ring a bell at all. Really, this doesn't you recognise that at all. Really, you've never heard an audio book narrated by me. Get out. Get out. Go. No, actually, I won't kick you out, but I will invite you up on stage. Put your hands together for this lady here, everybody. I'm going to embarrass her here. What's your name? Emma. Emma. Everyone say hi, Emma. I invited you up to help me out because um, I, th I think a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to be an audio book narrator. It's, it's quite a difficult job. I mean, first of all, you have to stay in a little glass booth for a very extended period of time and, and read words. And, and often if you make a mistake, the producer um, of the audio book will get quite cross with you and they will yell at you something like, Wrong! Do it again! Idiot! So I thought we might demonstrate to the good folk here <laughs> how that would play out. Um, so, in, in fact, um, I'll, 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 you... You pretend to be the narrator, I mean the producer, and I'll pretend to be the narrator. And uh, when I make a mistake, you yell at me, wrong, do it again, idiot. In a big voice, like a reenactment. So if somebody could just yell out, action, that'd be great. Action. Well, one would be good. <laughs> You watch as Danny, still fast asleep, stumbles around a bit more. And then you walk out of the room, you get up and you, oh. Uh, uh, wrong, do it again, idiot. Well, are you a school teacher? <laughs> or just a mother, yeah? Both. Both. Fantastic. Give her a round of applause. She was awesome, wasn't she? I'm going to give you a, a copy of uh, The Trip Diaries 2, which is actually an audio book narrated and written by me. There goes Emma, everybody. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, People was, people was asked me, say, say to me, how, you know, how do you become a narrator? Um, I started out as an actor. I'm an actor. My first role was playing an answering machine in a contemporary version of a Shakespeare play. I had one line. To beep or not to beep? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> but I've also been on the telly. I've been in, in both soap operas, home and away. <laughs> I, was in a, I was in a really, really old show called Colin Carpenter. You might remember that. You look really, really old. <laughs> I, was in a, uh, I was in a movie recently called The Hunger Games. Now do you recognise me? No? I'll give you a clue. I wasn't in it very much. It was only the very beginning of the film. You might remember the, the, the credits rolled and there was the music and it was all... And I was all... And she was... That was me in The Hunger Games. These days I'm a lot more famous for um, being a narrator than I am being an actor because I'm, I'm, I'm the voice of all of the Andy Griffiths books. Of course, Andy, Andy uh, world famous, uh, famous around the world for being such a wonderful writer of children's stories. And it's interesting, isn't it, you know, because often because I narrate all of his books, often um, children will hear me speak and they'll come up to me and they'll say, Are you Andy Griffiths? <laughs> and I always go, Yes, I am. And, and, and then I'll sign an autograph, you know, to Tommy from Andy. <laughs> Sucked it. <laughs> and it was funny, actually, because the other day I was, I was doing a show in a library and Andy just happened to be there. And I was telling him the story about how often kids think I'm him. And he said to me, it's so bizarre that you say that, Stig, because often uh, kids will come up to me and they'll say, are you Stig Williams? <laughs> and Andy said, no, I always go, yes, I am. <laughs> And then he'll sign an autograph, you know, to Tommy from Stig. Sucked it. <laughs> but I've narrated a, a lot of audio books over the last 25 years, mainly for a company called Belinda Audio. Some of you may be familiar with the Borrow Box product, which is uh, a digital download solution, which is now in uh, libraries pretty much right around the country. And in fact, Belinda are, are the largest producer of audio books in the British Commonwealth. And these days, uh, I do a lot more for Belinda than just narrate books. That'd be the key. So at Belinda we've been in business for over 25 years. 
Um, we started off as a family-run library supply business and we're now the number one audio publisher in the British Commonwealth. And we're also home to the leading library download solution called Borrowbox, your library in one app. We sell that solution to libraries and schools and it enables members of those libraries or those schools to borrow e-books or e-audiobooks for limited times via digital loans. As I clambered into the buggy, Kelly climbed out and tried to get up on the bull bar. Um, so I mean, it all starts with the casting, finding actors that, that are going to um, deliver the material in a way that is true to, to how it's been written. The actor or narrators, as we call them, will always um, read the book beforehand, so they'll usually come in with a pretty strong idea of how they want to, um, to approach the book, and the producer's job is really to um, accommodate that and to help the, the narrator to, to realise that vision. So basically our acquisitions team scour the world to find the best titles from the world's best storytellers. Audiobooks are the fastest growing book category, um, and I think that their popularity in recent times has been a lot to do with devices and the mobility of devices. So of course the advent of the smartphone has meant that everyone can now carry an audiobook around in their pocket. So we add music, we do a lot of processing to make the audio sound fuller and louder. If, if the narrator's made a mistake, we might have to edit some words out. I'd say a, an average turnaround from when we first get the go ahead, um, four to six weeks. And I'll see you live at the library. So basically through our stick life at the library sponsorship, it's all about kind of promoting literacy and reading amongst children. <laughs> Each year we start our summer reading club and launch it in schools across Townsville and usually bring in a special guest to help excite the kids about reading. This year we've got Stig Wimes in and it's been a fantastic ride. Last year the kids of Townsville read 11,150 books and this year they are determined to smash that record wide open. Listening comprehension precedes reading comprehension, so audiobooks are a huge part of um, children's development in terms of reading. So we, to a stint, throughout libraries and schools all around the country, um, all in the name of promoting reading and literacy. It was epic. We want fans of the authors who are coming into the store to pick up their latest copy of um, Kate Morton's new book to see the, the print edition, but then also see the audiobook edition next to it. So they might choose to take that instead. The mantra of Belinda is to live, work, create and inspire. So every product that we make um, is imbued with those values. And we also are all about the joy of storytelling. Shall we do one more? Yeah. And there's something very enjoyable, I think, um, from the producer's side of, of sitting there and listening to somebody read to you for several days. As far as jobs go, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I mean, we, work, we have one of the most amazing jobs in the industry. We get to work with actors and authors, and the product that we produce at the end of the day is a truly, you know, incredible listening experience. Say, uh, you know, thanks for that lovely round of applause. Appreciate it. <laughs> I have to say, I, I love doing that. I love uh, travelling around the country and performing in schools and libraries. I get to see some beautiful parts of this country, and I get to meet some really inspirational kids. And see, the, the way we, the way I see it, really, is that um, reading and literature are up against some pretty tough, high-tech competition: computer games, the internet, Candy Crush. So what we try to do with Stig Live at the library is engage the kids in literacy uh, by injecting some fun and some excitement into reading and storytelling. And I have to say, we've had some pretty major successes after every performance. Uh, the feedback from libraries is that memberships have increased and the use of Borrowbox has now skyrocketed. And this all centres around the use of audiobooks. And for those of you who are not familiar with the power of an audiobook, let me just enlighten you a little bit. I think we've got a graphic here on the screen. Research shows that um, the single most important activity for building knowledge re required for eventual success in reading is reading out loud to children. And obviously, you can't always do that as parents. You know, that's not possible. So an audiobook is a fantastic alternative. Uh, like my kids grew up listening to audiobooks. I, mean, I got them for free, so why not? But if you walked, if you walked through my house at um, 
at, at bedtime, you'd hear my voice, uh, you know, narrating various different stories coming out of, it was like a cacophony of me going nah, 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 like this at people. My wife hated it. But uh, as a result, my children, you know, just love storytelling and they have excelled in English subjects at school. Audiobooks uh, increases reading accuracy by 52% and improves comprehension by 76%. Big numbers. Just by putting an audiobook on in the car on the way to school instead of listening to Bridge and Limo for breakfast. Uh, increases reading speed, improves fluency, expands vocabulary, uh, and who doesn't want that for their kids? And this, this, this one here really got to me. Uh, North University, Texas, it comes from. Children who are better listeners are also better learners. And how simple is that? By exercising their listening muscle, and help, we help to create better learners. The benefits are endless. 85% of what we learn, we learn by listening. This one, uh, combining print and audio, increases a recall 40% over just print alone. And the best thing about it, an audio book, is of course that you can listen to it anywhere, anytime, and while you're doing something else. Who here has recently listened to an audio book? Yeah, what, what were you doing? What? Ironing, brilliant. Anybody else? Dr driving, dr absolutely. Driving, driving to work, listening to Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> I hope you were hands free. But it could be anything, ironing, you know, cl cleaning, shopping, crutching a sheep. Who here has ever listened to one of my audio books while having sex? <laughs> no one? Just me. <laughs> okay. But audio books are all about enjoyment and, and versatility. Versatility around where and when you can listen to them, but also versatility around who is listening. Families on driving holidays, time poor businessmen, older folk with all the time in the, work, in the world, obsessed kids, busy adults, even dogs. Well, obviously not, not, not dogs. I, just, I said that to sort of to, to prove a point, but it, it, it could be dogs, couldn't it? You know, why not? Sign your dog up to Borrow Box, you know, download the audio version of The Adventures of Tin Tin, film him with headphones on, put him on YouTube, get a billion hits and get rich overnight. Bang! Nothing's impossible. You might be surprised to learn that the biggest consumers of audio books are truck drivers. I met a truckie once who used to refer to Bryce Courtney on audio as the no-dos of the Nullarbor. <laughs> but for all the excitement, and recent popularity and huge popularity, they just get more and more popular all the time. I, I, I can't forget where it all started, uh, which for me goes back 25 years uh, when I first volunteered at Vision Australia to read books for the visually impaired. I'm going to leave you with a clip that we filmed on a recent tour to Adelaide with a young man by the name of Matthias McCarthy. My name is Stig Weems. Uh, I'm an audiobook narrator. Thanks for listening. <laughs> I'm Matthias Anthony McCarthy and I go to Sassafi School um, for vision impaired students. I, I first started listening to audiobooks when I was five years old. I, I can't see a lot and the books have, um, have very small print and it's hard for me to um, read books that I really like and audiobooks you don't have to read them at all. You just have to um, sit, sit down and just listen quietly. The first book I listened that was read by Stig Williams was just disgusting. Like, put with your skin and like, it was hilarious. I just laughed my head off and I had to take it home the next week. And he's a wussy boy. Quit it, I say. In March, my mum emailed Stig um, on his website and he replied and yes, he did do school visits. So that's how we come to go to Adelaide and yeah. That's how um, he came to our school and did a whole tour. Lots of stuff here. I mean, you got, we got stuff for everyone. It's, it's a, it was a really big library. At our school, we do lots more fun things than other schools. Like, we get to go on so many excursions, and I suppose for that we had a science project once. And I mean, other kids had to take them home and do it at home, but we did it at school instead. You haven't seen the TV room, which is oh, yeah, show me where we have a tea. The room which we just watch videos on. The library well has lots of woody books and I always borrow books that are read by Stig. And my favourite one that's read by Stig is probably just a cross between the Max Rumble series and Speaking McGee series. If you've never heard an audiobook before, then maybe you should listen to one. 
For example, you could go to libraries and they're always under the children, children's audiobook section. And you'll find lots of them. Yeah, they're pretty good. I mean, you don't have to read the book, you just have to listen to them. And it's easy. Well, he... Um, sorry. So just say, uh, he, he was just a gorgeous kid, but I have to uh, just remember this story watching it. You know, uh, he was great on camera and stuff, but the whole time we weren't on camera and we weren't filming, he kept saying to me, what is the stick? I keep making me have a stick. Tell him stick. I don't want to use the stupid stick. <laughs> I said, mate, if you get the stick, you bump into shit. You know, he's... I don't want the stick, stick. And I, by the end of it, I had to go and beg the headmaster if I could get rid of this. They wouldn't let him get rid of the stick. Anyway, thanks. <laughs>